This is the new Turin Legato espresso machine. And for the short period of time I've had it, I've actually really been impressed with it. Before we dive in, I just wanna extend a huge thanks and a shout out to Espresso Outlet and the team over there for sending this new machine to me to check out. As usual with all my videos, they supplied the product for free, but they're not paying me for my review or my thoughts on this product in any way, shape or form. These are genuinely my own thoughts and they don't get to see this video before you do. For an entry level espresso machine at 499 US dollars, I think the Legato has some really nice features that a lot of machines at its price point or even a little bit higher price point don't offer. Now, since this is a brand new to market product, I don't know about the longevity or durability of this compared to other machines in this price point, but I can say that it seems like overall it's built very well. Now I haven't opened it up and been inside it, looked at the pump or the wiring or any of that sort of stuff, but from some pictures and things I've seen, it looks pretty decently put together inside. So I don't foresee any major longevity or durability problems with this, but don't hold me to that. Cause again, I don't know, this is very new to the market and I haven't had this machine very long. But what I can say is for the short period of time I've had this machine, it has worked flawlessly with no issues. As far as controls and features go, you got your power button here, a manual shot button here, and an automatic shot button here. When you use the manual mode, you press this button once, the machine turns on, pulls your shot, and then when you're done, you don't wanna pull any more espresso and you've reached the amount of time or whatever you're wanting to do or the amount of quantity of a shot you want, you press this button again and it stops pulling the shot. For the automatic mode that you program, you basically press this button once, it pulls the shot, and when it gets to that preset amount of time, it stops pulling a shot. To program the automatic mode, it's really simple. All you do is push and hold the automatic button. It'll start your shot timer over here. And when your timer gets to the amount of time you want that shot to run till, you release the button and then your automatic shot time is set. So it's really simple and it's really straightforward and easy to do. Speaking of this display over here, I really like this. This is a multifunction LED display that shows you your current set temperature. And when it's up to temperature, you'll see this temperature changing as the machine is heating up. Um, and then also when you start pulling a shot, this turns into a shot timer, which is really handy to have that built in. To change the temperature, all you do is push and hold the plus button for three seconds. You'll see all the buttons flash over here once, and then you can adjust up or down your temperature that you wanna have the machine set to. And then when you stop touching it for a few seconds, it basically turns back on all the lights and it sets that temperature. To set your pre-infusion time, you press the negative button here and just sort of hold that for a few seconds and the same thing. Now you have P for pre-infusion time and you can change that up or down. The other thing you have on your front panel here is your steam wand control. And this is just like almost like a half turn knob. Just like that, really simple. Down here in sort of the, the working area of the machine, you've got a pressure gauge, which is really nice and handy to have that built in. Not all machines have a pressure gauge built into them, so that's really nice. One thing I will say about the pressure with this machine is it is a pretty high pressure pump that makes about 15 bar, which obviously, as you know, if you're familiar with espresso, is a little on the high side. Usually we're targeting about eight to nine bar of pressure for kind of your traditional, you know, typical uh, shots of espresso. So that is pretty high. I did verify that I put a blind basket in here um, and I deadheaded the pump, turned it on and I watched the gauge go up to about 15 bar. Um, at the current moment, I don't know if there's any way, like I said, I haven't been inside this machine yet. So I don't know if there's any way to adjust that base pressure. I did discover there is a flow rate control valve here next to the left side of the group head that you can make some adjustments to. It's not going to make any changes to the pressure that the machine operates at. However, it does change how quickly or slowly that pressure ramps up. So it is worth experimenting with, but it's definitely not gonna make any changes to the peak pressure that builds up while pulling a shot. So that is one thing that I wish was a little bit different with this machine is that you had pressure control as well with all the other controls that it gives you, but not the end of the world. Even though that's pretty high pressure, you can still grind and kind of adjust for that and get great shots with it. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I know some people get really hyper-focused on espresso you know, pressure, which it is an important factor to take into consideration, but I'm sure at some point there will probably be like an overpressure valve kit or something for these where you can adjust that base pressure back down. But for an entry-level machine at this price with all these other features that it has, I wouldn't let that deter you because like I said, you can still get great shots of espresso with this um, and kind of have a little bit of control over your pressure by how you grind your coffee. Another nice touch that the Legato has down here for the work area is this light right here. This is pretty bright, pretty good size LED light. Um, that's nice to have. It's nice illumination on your work area so you can see what you're doing. And it's just a nice little touch that, um, you know, not all machines have. The steam wand here, isn't my favorite. It's a little short, but kind of to be expected, this is a little bit shorter of a machine. Um, and it's pretty typical to have a steam one kind of like this for this style of machine. 
Being a thermal block, it does take a few seconds to heat up. And when you first turn the steam wand on, you will have some sort of condensation and a little bit of, you know, solid streams of water coming out of the tips on the steam wand until the temperature comes up and it starts creating steam. So one thing I recommend you do with that is just put a cup or a carafe or something under this when you first turn it on and let it heat up and build up to its full steam pressure before you start steaming your milk. Otherwise you're gonna have kind of weak steam pressure to start. I would definitely sort of purge that out and let it get up to full steam temperature. It doesn't take all that long. Um, it is a little bit of a quirky kind of thing that comes with the territory of, of machines like this sometimes, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. Once it's up to steam pressure, it does a decent job and I've gotten some nicely textured milk with this. Since this is an entry level or budget you know, espresso machine, we need to keep that in mind when we start talking about the accessories that come with a machine like this. It's not uncommon that machines in this price point come with accessories that aren't all that great. It's nice that it comes with an included tamp. However, I'm not a big fan of this tamp. Um, I don't like this big beefy square feeling tamp. Um, for some people out there, this might feel nice in the hand. I don't really personally care for it. It definitely very much reminds me of the tamps that come standard with the Breville machines. I can't remember if those are square or not, but just sort of the overall feeling um, and construction of this, it's just, you know, it's a very generic, just basic tamp. So it's nice that they include that if you don't already have a tamp and you're not somebody who's already got some coffee equipment, but I would definitely, definitely recommend upgrading the tamp as soon as you can. Another thing they include that is very, very cheesy that I wish they would have just not included and saved the plastic on is this coffee scoop. I am not a big fan of coffee scoops. I imagine most of you out there probably aren't a big fan of coffee scoops either, but they do include one. If you want the scoop, obviously it comes with it. Again, personally, I would have rather they saved the plastic and maybe, you know, made a better version of this tamp than give me a scoop because this will never get used and probably eventually end up in the trash and then in a landfill, which isn't great. But, you know, they include it if it's something you want. They also included a group head cleaning brush, which is important because it's important to keep your machine clean. However, this one's not great feeling and there are definitely some better ones out there if you wanna upgrade this. Um, it works in a pinch and you know, it's definitely something, but there are definitely better group head cleaning brushes out there that I would probably recommend you upgrade to. This machine does come with two options for portafilter baskets, the double shot basket, which is the one I have installed in here and a single shot basket here. I'm not a big fan of these style of baskets. I never use a single shot basket anyways, and I imagine most of you out there probably don't either. Uh, I'm not a fan of tapered baskets, nor am I a fan of ridged baskets. I would highly recommend you upgrade the basket in this, especially if you're gonna keep the standard, you know, included portafilter. Um, just make sure that whichever basket you get will fit in here, do some measuring, because uh, I have a couple different options for baskets. Um, my 18 gram baskets fit in here, but my 20 gram basket does not. It hits the bottom wall of the portafilter before it's fully seated on the top ridge of the portafilter. So just something to keep in mind, not all baskets seem to fit in this, um, but from what I can tell, most 18 gram baskets fit in here. So if you're using an 18 gram basket or smaller, um, you're probably fine. Um, just be aware of that if you're not gonna upgrade your portafilter, which is also something I definitely recommend you do. It is not a very good portafilter. Um, it doesn't feel good in the hands, it's plasticky. I mean, the, the top part of the, the actual filter basket and the spout and everything is metal, but the handle is just kind of a cheap easy feeling, you know, injection molded or, you know, whatever plastic here that has a bunch of ridges in it. And I think part of the reason why the ridges were designed into this is because there are a couple of ridges on here where it looks like the two halves of this get molded together. So there's like a manufacturing line or ridge that's sort of in this. And I think they just added these other ridges on here to sort of make it seem like that was intentional instead of grinding down this ridge and making a smooth handle. So. Definitely the portafilter is not my favorite, and I think that you should definitely upgrade the portafilter. I have a bottomless Normcore portafilter that I like to use that fits in this just fine, so that's one that would be a very, you know, again, minimal money investment to upgrade this machine. The handle on this is removable from the basket section, so if you maybe just wanted to get a handle that has the same thread pitch and everything on here, which most portafilters that have thread on handles have the same, you know, or seem to have the same thread pitch. My norm core handle from my bottomless Sporta filter does fit on here. So that's an option too, if you wanted to do that. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend upgrading the Sporta filter. I think that'll make for a much better experience. It'll be much nicer looking and it'll just, you know, feel better overall while you're using the machine. 
So let's go ahead and pull a shot from start to finish. I am gonna use the included portafilter filter that they supply and the tamp just because that's what it comes with and I wanna show you know that you can make nice espresso even using the included accessories. All right, so I am going to grind this on my DF64 that's over here off camera. One thing I will say too about this tamp is there is quite a bit of play in here side to side. So I just tamped this just now. And when I pulled it out, there's a ridge of untamped coffee around the outside. So um, I'm actually gonna do this again and use one of my tamps cause I just don't care for this. Alrighty. There's not a lot of room in here for a glass and a scale. Um, I obviously always like to use a scale when I'm brewing any sort of coffee stuff. I recommend you do the same if you're not. It does make it difficult, however, with a spouted portafilter and even a thin scale like this one I have here from Cafe Sing. Um, it, it does become a little bit more difficult to, uh, to use the scale and do that. So we'll try that. Ten second pre infusion. So, little fine on the grind. I'm up around, well, kind of right at nine bar and sort of dropping off. So that's not too terrible. Went up to ten bar at first and then sort of ramped down. But it is a little too fine of a grind because in thirty seconds I only got out twenty four grams. So I'm gonna loosen up the grind and we'll do that again. There we go. Went up to about eight bar and then it's dropping down. That was 18 in, about 39 out in 30 seconds. That's really tasty. This is a really nice uh, washed Peru from my buddies over at Pear Cupworks, this coffee they use on espresso. That's very tasty. The only thing that I really think would make this better was just being able to have a little bit more control over your grind if you were able to control the pressure a little bit on the machine. But again, this is a very good drinkable shot and this would even be good in a latte. So let's steam some milk real quick. I don't know if I can steam this here at this angle very well, give it a whirl. Because it's not, you know, crazy steam pressure, it does take a little bit of time to, to steam your milk, especially if you're steaming a larger quantity of milk like this for a latte. So there we go. That actually looks pretty good. Always clean your steam wand. That texture actually doesn't look bad for that being an awkward steam there. That is not good latte art, so I'm not even gonna show you. Tastes good though. That's a pretty tasty latte. A little bit light on the coffee flavor because I drank a little bit of that shot before I poured it in here. So it's a little milk heavy, but overall, really good shot. Overall, really good experiences using the Legato. I like this machine. I like the built-in controls you have and the gauges. I like that you have the ability to control the temperature and the pre-infusion time. Um, and it's easy to set up and get going. So somebody that's new to espresso, um, I think this is a great viable option for, you know, again, that entry level budget sort of machine that has some additional features that some other machines in this price point don't have. There's actually a hundred dollar off and $50 off coupon codes on Espresso Outlet's website. So you might wanna go check out the link in the description and check out their site and utilize that code if it's still available if you wanna get yourself a legato. So I think that's gonna wrap up this video. I do plan on doing another video, kind of a follow-up video in a few months, just to kind of see how things are going with this, let you guys know if my experience with this has changed or if I've had any issues or concerns with it. But like I said, as of right now, it's working great for me and I've really been enjoying using it. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. And also before this video ends, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button if you like the videos. I really appreciate it and it would mean a lot to me. So take care and we'll see you on the next video.